incredible pinstripes on the side of the van. The whole side of the van is just scratched. This is a cracking campsite. Can Let's go four wheel drive it. Yo! Wow. Seahorses are such a cool creature. Getting back up this sand hill is not going to be an easy task. To say I'm nervous is an understatement. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Yeah, boys! <laughs> We're hardly just getting started. I say that so often, but it's so true. We have got so much that we still want to achieve. Right, hey, back on the road this morning. Uh, we just made our way into Wellstead, which if you're heading along the South Coast Highway between Esperance and Albany, is a great little RV stop. Really good toilets. There's actually hot showers here as well. Uh, if you're traveling without an ensuite, playground for the kids, good water and a dump point and good rubbish facilities. Everything that we need as travellers. So while we're in towns like this that create really good stopovers for travellers like us, we try and support them as much as we can. There's a little cafe here and we went over to the servo and just topped up on fuel. We didn't actually need any fuel in the car, uh, but I did need to top up the diesel tank for our hot water. Spent a little bit of money in town just to try and uh, help the town out and thank them for their RV stop. It's really good. Anyway, we're going to go a little bit further east today uh, to an, another boat harbour, a second boat harbour in as many weeks. Uh, and yeah, go and check out boat harbour sort of, yeah, on our way towards Bremer Bay. We're hoping we might be able to camp down on the beach. We'll see what we find when we get there. WA campsite, another dirt road. This one seems pretty good so far. It's a few little corrugations and stuff, but pretty smooth. When we hit the dirt, we just I just throw it in four wheel drive. I just run it in high range. It just gives you better handling and takes a bit of strain off the car. When I first hit a dirt road, I try and just get up, I try and assess it, how the, what the conditions are like. Try and get up to around 60 kilometers an hour, if I can. Um, if it's a good, wide, straight dirt road like this one. It just, um, allows you to sail over the corrugations a little bit if there are a few little corrugations and then sort of figure out from there whether I'm whether it's the sort of road I want to air down on if it's really rough or if uh, if I'm able to go faster or if I need to slow down a bit but I generally find when towing around that 60k an hour mark when you first hit the dirt just to get get a feel for it generally it's pretty good Alright, so the Wikicamp reviews for Boat Harbour said that Trevor the caretaker is an absolute legend and I can confirm that is true. We've just come in, uh, I've just said g'day to him. He said, oh, jump in the landy, he's taken Simon in his Land Cruiser down for a spin on the beach to see if there's any sights and like pick the best spot for the, the wind conditions. So when they get back, we'll roll into camp. This is gonna put some incredible pinstripes on the side of the van and probably the car. I'm glad we got the the wrap on the car and the windows of the caravan to protect them um, because yeah it's going to be a tight old track we're in low range we've just aired down let's just send it and see what happens oh trees coming in the door oh mate it's going to get it gets tighter than this all right let's go have a look Did 
tell everyone you've got dishes in the dishwasher as well, you've got to empty the dishwasher. And the washing machine's full of wet washing. Oh, that's not as big a drama. Oh, man. This will test out the dishwasher. Corrugated road into sandy track. I'm gonna need you to put that camera down so I can see it in the wing mirror there, Liz. Can you see it now? The whole side of the van is just scratched. So we helped to design this caravan window protection kit with bush wraps. I'll leave a discount here on the screen for you guys if anyone is interested in it. It has just saved us thousands of dollars just in that one track. I was hoping to get down on the beach, but the tides are quite big at the moment. There's not a lot of beach left at high tide. So I decided to uh, take the site that Trevor had for us up here, tucked up in the dunes, and a lot more protected for the wind up here as well which is pretty handy. We're just gonna bunker in, get some dinner on and, uh, and have an early night. Well, I say early, we'll probably be up late watching Netflix and stuff, but uh, <laughs> get into bed early anyway. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take you guys for a bit of a look around tomorrow and show you what camp looks like. All right, competition time. The legends at Survival First Aid, makers of the best first aid kits in the country, are giving you the chance to win back the cost of your shop up to 500 bucks. All you gotta do is jump over to survival.net.au, grab yourself of anything from their range of first aid kits and use our discount code, Lifestyle Pioneers, which will also get you 10% off and you're in the draw. It's as simple as that. Sunday, the 24th of March, the winner will be drawn on our YouTube channel and final entries will be midday on Friday, the 22nd of March, 2024. So all you gotta do, jump onto survival.net.au, grab yourself a couple of first aid kits, use our discount code, and you can win back the cost of your shop up to the value of 500 bucks. So if you spend 600, you win 500 back. One lucky winner will win back the cost of their shop. Winner's gonna be drawn at random, and uh, can't wait, hopefully you're the lucky winner. Jump in and check out, there's a range of kits from Survival First Aid, we love them, and we know you guys will too. Cheers. espresso machine is in getting repaired at Albany um, they had to order parts for it to fix the grinder it's pretty much been um, overused I think is the, <laughs> the nice way of putting it but it's still under warranty which is good so in the meantime uh, we've resorted to coffee bags so it's not great it's not great I'm not gonna lie but it'll get the job done and the other thing we've got uh, to get us through because you know we've got addictions to caffeine is this cold brew that you get from the supermarket. We've tried a few different ones now, they're all pretty good. Um, yeah, it's really good iced lattes, the second coffee, but the first one has to be hot. The first coffee has to be hot, so yeah. Look, on the plus side, I've still got fresh milk, so I'm not drinking bag coffee bags with powdered milk, but um, yeah, look, it'll get, it'll get the job done. How's the kettle going? This is the kettle. I do not regret my decision to not have a kettle. Um, occasionally it would be quick and easy, but for the space it takes up, we just I either use just a saucepan or the um, or the thermomix is the other thing that I use. So yeah. In the rock pool. That's what these people were saying. Sometimes you can go for a snorkel in the rock pool there and the seal will come and hang out. The dogs of the ocean, they are. Puppy dogs of the ocean. Beach walk this morning. The weather has changed a bit. It's uh, The wind's swung around and it's blowing a bit more offshore. So the sea's calmed down a little bit. We're gonna go for a wander along the beach, go for a bit of an explore, see what we can find. It's looking like a beautiful morning. This is a cracking campsite. It's a bit tricky to get into. Um, 
can't be too precious with your vehicle if you, and caravan for scratches and things like that. There is quite a few dips to get in, but pretty good, pretty good. So you might remember we've been testing out the uh, Bluetti AC200L. This is the kind of the upgraded model from the AC200 Max we tested out last year. So we've been ha had this running now for a couple of months, testing it out. Um, these are, if you haven't seen these before, they're basically a portable power station, solar generator, silent generator, whatever you want to call it. Inside here is a big ass lithium battery, it's like a 170 amp battery, an inverter, so we've got four 240 volt outlets, uh, as well as all your 12 volt outlets, uh, USB-C, all of that gear, and charging. So you can charge these off solar, you can charge them off the car when you're driving, you can charge them off 240 as well. We, find, we think they're really, really handy and a really good alternative to uh, having a full dual battery system if you want something a bit portable, or if you just want to upgrade your, um, your power system in your caravan, camper, trailer, whatever it might be, these are not a bad option to consider. Uh, this is the biggest one. This is a beast, this one. And one of the downsides to that is it is pretty big physically, but it's also pretty heavy. Um, it's a, I think it's a bit over 20 kilos. So it's a big single person lift, um, which is fine over a short distance. But yeah, if you want to move it around a lot, you really need two people to carry it a good distance. But there's, like I said, they're super handy. You can run big devices often we've been doing cooking on the induction you would have seen a couple of months ago we've been doing some induction cooking we've also run the thermomix off it we've also used them to charge the caravan before to run extra power into the van they do charge well off solar we've been running it off the solar panel a bit while we've been here and yeah they, i think they're they're a really good thing i was just talking to our mate pete pete's got our old ac200 max the predecessor to this that we tested out last year he uses it to run his fridge in his car and as well to run his starlink off and he was saying one of the things he likes about having the app is that from in bed of a night time, he can turn off the AC to turn his Starlink off to not use that power overnight uh, without having to get up out of bed because you can remote switch everything from the app, which is pretty handy, pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I think they're, they're a pretty cool thing. We're gonna be testing out a couple more of the Blue Eddy ones um, throughout the year over the next couple of months and another new exciting product coming out from Blue Eddy soon that we're keen to test out as well, uh, which is gonna help with uh, Cocktails and beers, there's a clue for you. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, if you're in the market for upgrading your power system or if you just want a secondary power system like we use it for, or like I said, for a dual battery system, um, I think the Blue Eddy's a pretty cool option. Getting clipped in? Yeah. Almost. Almost. Twisted. <laughs> Ready for adventure? Of course. Of course, always. Always. Can Let's go four it? wheel drive it, yo! Where are we going, Zah? I don't know. We're just gonna go. We're not, we're not sure? Okay, no. sounds fabulous. We're just gonna go for a little drive. It looks like we can, there's a full drive track that we might be able to take to head over to the next beach west of us here. So we'll go check it out. Came for a drive, get out and explore. Go and see something different. This sand is really soft. Uh, not sure how far we'll get. And we don't really know much about this track. It is just a bit of Simon flying the drone and seeing that there was roughly a track. So we'll go scout it out. Hopefully we can make it. Uh, that'd be awesome. fun drive this is just coming up over over the headland there and getting this awesome view down there a few little gnarly spots but overall not too difficult at all it is a pretty sandy little track getting down onto the beach itself 
Well, here we are, we made it down onto the beach. We had to stop there for a minute and let the tyres down a little bit more. I only had them down to 20 in the front and 30 in the back for coming into the campsite the other day. Uh, I've gone down to 15 in the front, 18 in the back, and it just cruised along the soft sand. No problems at all, it feels a lot better. You can feel, I reckon, when your tyre pressures aren't right. It just, everything feels more difficult than it should be. As soon as you get them down, it floats on top of the sand and uh, a lot easier on the vehicle and, and just cruises along the beach. I tell you what, it doesn't take long. We were just saying how you get to somewhere like this, it doesn't take long to feel very, very remote. Only just over this headland is a campground with 50 people in it and you come on a short full drive track that only took us about 15 minutes over to Jack's Beach, which is the next beach over, and we've got it all to ourselves and it feels very rugged, very remote, and yeah, it all changes in an instant. It is a little bit uh, nerve wracking, a little bit anxiety inducing to bring your family somewhere like this. Like I feel quite responsible for my family, which is obviously pretty normal. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, you gotta remind yourself that we are prepared for this sort of stuff. We do have an emergency beacon, our PLB. We do have recovery gear to self extract ourselves. You know, it's not, yeah, it, it, it's a difficult balance a lot of the time between being uh, prepared and yeah, just taking as it comes and, and going and having an adventure. But I still, even after all these years, don't get 100% comfortable with it. I think another part of what's creating that, that feeling for me is that, you know, I've obviously built my dream vehicle. I don't want to lose it. <laughs> I don't want to damage it. I don't want to, yeah, do anything to it that's, um, yeah, that's going to break it in any way. But at the same time, what's the point in building it if you're not going to get out and use it? And this is exactly why I wanted to build a more capable four-wheel drive than what we've had before. As good as the old Ranger was, um, it's definitely nice to have a more capable four-wheel drive. That sandy soft track coming down here onto the beach though was quite long, quite windy, and quite soft. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't pretty nervous about how well we're gonna go getting back up that, but only time will tell. Um, we'll just deal with it as it comes. For now, we're just gonna chill out and enjoy the beach for a bit. Unfortunately, we found a fair bit of rubbish on the beach since we got here. Uh, looks like it's a lot of what's washed up, not so much uh, people that have been here visiting the beach, but yeah, we're just going around picking a little bit up. Every little bit helps, and we've got the big bag on the back of the car, so we can chuck a bit in there. I found a bottle that was from Malaysia. That sort of shows you how far some of this stuff's traveled, which is, which is really sad. Um, but yeah, it's nice to be able to at least do a little bit and help clean up. I was quietly protective of my heart to reassure that I could break to pieces and be left alone once more. If you hadn't been so patient, you'd be easy to ignore. You put up. It's a. It's a seahorse skeleton. It's a seahorse skeleton. I've never seen a seahorse skeleton before. Oh, the boys will love this. Wow. Seahorses are such a cool creature. Like, they're just, they're just really cool. I love like that the dads are the ones that hold the babies and yeah, they just, the way they move, the way they hold on to things. Oh, their little noses, so cute. <laughs> nose and his eye and his body and that's his big long tail and these are his little fins. I guess you can touch him, just be gentle with it. Wow. It's yes. cool, hey. I just want to see what those. He's like not alive, fish. yeah. All right, good little play down at the beach. Now though, the real challenge. Getting back up this sand hill is not gonna be an easy task. To say I'm Nervous is an understatement. Uh, this is gonna be a real challenge. I reckon we've got a good chance of getting bogged and we'll probably have to have a few cracks at it. We may even have to get the treads off the roof and uh, give ourselves a bit of help, but we'll see how we go. Uh, I'm gonna chuck it in low range, second gear, both diff locks, and just send it and see what happens. Let's go. So I ended 
up third gear. <laughs> oh, I'm shaking. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, what an adrenaline rush. Yeah, I ended up third gear, high range. Uh, sorry, third gear, low range. I ended up just choosing the rear locker because I wanted to keep steering for those sharp turns. And oh, what a car. What a car. Oh, I was a bit nervous too because last time we took it on the beach, we didn't let the tyres down and we got a bit of a clutch burn. And I know the clutches in these are pretty susceptible to burning out. So I think, yeah. I've got so much more confidence in the car now. No clutch smell. It's just, yeah, low range, let your tyres down, and yeah. What a car. That was a big climb. Oh, I'm buzzing. That's awesome. Um, so I just thought it was the first initial bit. I didn't realise we had to go up all those turns as well. I thought Simon was sort of just like, you know, just being a bit nervous about getting up that just initial steep bit. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was a much bigger climb than I anticipated it was going to be, but yeah. To say, to say we're in love with this car is a bit of an understatement. We just spent most of the time on the beach just staring at our car, which, yeah. It's new to us and we're really proud of it, so yeah, that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. We love it, and that's all that matters. We're the only people that need to love it, but yeah, I don't reckon the Ranger would have made it like that. <laughs> no, that was a big send, and yeah, the Ranger struggled for clearance more than anything because we never did a suspension upgrade and it was on you know, standard tyres. So I'd always struggle for clearance, but yeah, I mean, wow, I'm still... <laughs> How's that V8? I'm fine, oh, I love this car, <laughs> oh, I love this car. I have wanted a car like this most of my adult life. It's just, it's hard to put into words when you yeah achieve a dream like this, a goal. I know to a lot of people watching it seems extravagant, and it is, and unnecessary, and all of these other things, but if you've ever had just something that you just always wanted, and then you reach that goal and you achieve it, it's, and to get out and use it like this for what we're doing for, it is such a special feeling. It's, yeah, it makes you very, very grateful. It's been a lot of hard work and a lot of years to get to this point, and it's, we're hardly just getting started. I say that, so often, but it's so true. We have got so much that we still want to achieve. People ask us after almost three years on the road, are you done, haven't you seen it all? Mate, I've got a longer list now than when we left home three years ago, I can tell you that. And talking of pride and joy, stuff like that makes you glad that you wrapped your car <laughs> in PPF, I can tell you that. All right, let's get this thing home. Oh, I got a cold beer waiting for me at home in the fridge. Super simple dinner tonight, just a nice simple pasta. Normally we do this with chicken, but we don't have any chicken. But we do have everything else almost for it. Um, and I've lost the tongs. They could be in the dishwasher. The dishwasher. They'll be in the dishwasher. It's yeah, gone. so it's just um, bacon. I'm just throwing some bacon now. I'm going to throw in some semi dried tomatoes, tomato paste, a little bit of cream, and some garlic, and throw in some pasta, and that'll do for tonight. All right, fried off the bacon, got all that nice and crispy, uh, and then just cooking up the garlic in the bacon fat. And then chuck in sun dried tomatoes, or the semi dried tomatoes, with all the good bits in that. Cook that off with a little bit of tomato paste. We'll throw the bacon back in. A little bit of cream in it. And we're ready to go. It'd be good if we had a pan that didn't everything didn't stick to. We, <laughs> we really need to shop for some new pans. Has anyone found what, what's everyone's recommendations for pans with removable handles? We like these Ingenio ones, these T-Fowl ones, but like I said, they're a couple of years old now and they're just about done. So normally at this point, I would add chicken in there as well, and I had a bit of white wine at this point, but we don't have any wine, unfortunately, at the moment. Well, we, we do, drink. but it's quite nice wine, and we don't want to waste it cooking, so I'm gonna, not that I'm saying this isn't good beer and I don't want to waste it, but anyway, I'm gonna throw some beer in instead. It just needs to have a bit of moisture. And so do I. <laughs> That's better. Just starts to make a bit of a sauce before we add the cream. It does taste better than it looks, I'll tell you that. 
Oh, it's amazing. And then we're going to throw some, is this parmesan? Parmesan. Parmesan yeah. cheese through it as well. Oops. I did miss a bit though. Nice. What happened to all the winder? Uh, Liz drank it all. <laughs> Okay, let's give this a go. This is one of my favorite pastas that Simon makes. So I'm very excited for this one. Mm. It's so good, doll. Bloody nailed it. Winner. Yeah, it's very, very different to what I normally make, but you just gotta make do sometimes with what you got. All right, we're gonna dig into this. We'll see you guys tomorrow. As he crashed through the classroom wall, the girls would Swoon as May. All right, we got out of the tightest bit. We're back on the road. Now we just got to get up this hill uh, with these big sand holes in it that we came down on the way in. It's going to be interesting with the van on. We'll see how we go climbing up. Just doing my best to dodge as many trees and branches as I can, but there's uh, some badges of honour like long, thin, little stripes down the side of the caravan. Tell you what though, I think the next caravan, we might upgrade from just having the PPF on the windows and just wrap to coat the whole thing. Should we go wild? Wild colours? Crazy colours? Let us know what colour you reckon we should wrap to coat the next caravan. Onwards and upwards, let's try and get up this hill. The highest building in your town. Where's my trees? I don't see them around it. No you wanna more. go to Mars, but the soil is full of mercury. Keep my water clean, free from PVC. How many pieces of plastic in the Tennessee River? I hope this makes you see things clearer. We made it up, it certainly wasn't easy. I was just saying to Liz when she got back in the car, I wish we had like four people on cameras and a couple of extra hands on deck to film it all. I think we did a pretty good job, but trying to, yeah, get all the shots that we wanted to get is really, really difficult, especially when you're trying to do a steep climb like that in low range. But that was first gear, low range, uh, both lockers in for a lot of it. Yeah, that was, that was probably some of the most challenging four-wheel driving we've ever done with the caravan, I reckon. Yeah, I think definitely some of the biggest ruts the caravan went through. I think I didn't get the biggest one for YouTube. I think I got that one on a um, Instagram for Instagram on a phone instead in portrait. But yeah, definitely go check them out. If you're not following us on Instagram, come say good day. Come say good day. Be friends there. You can keep up to date with where we actually are. More so in real time and ask us questions. It's really easy to get for us to get back to you there. So yeah, yeah, come say good day on Instagram. But oh, looks gnarly coming out <laughs> from the van. It never looks. Anything on camera it never looks as gnarly as what it is in real life. Um, yeah, but it is fun. It's definitely doable. Uh, I would definitely want high clearance coming in here though. I think it's a challenge of, of what we do that probably a lot of you don't see is that we're trying to film for both, yeah, Facebook and Instagram and, and a vertical format as well as the horizontal format for YouTube and you can't always edit the wide angle stuff for, you, uh, for Facebook and Instagram and vice versa. It's, so yeah, we're constantly trying to make sure we get all that as well as some awesome photos and everything and you're trying to do it all with just the two of us. So we do our best and hopefully you guys enjoy it, but it is definitely a challenge uh, that we are constantly faced with. Today's mission is to just get a bit further east. Uh, it's about four and a half hours from here to Esperin, so I'm not sure if we'll quite make it that far. We'll see how we go. It's tub past 10, so not a too bad of a time for us to be leaving camp. But um, yeah, we got some awesome stuff planned over at Aspirin. So we're meeting up with some friends of ours, some familiar faces, some people you might have seen on the channel before, uh, and, and some other content creators as well. So we're really looking forward to that, and we've got some epic beach camping planned over there. If Yeah, if you're not familiar with the Aspirin area, wait till you see it. But even if you are, I mean, we can't wait to, to show you guys our experience over there. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fun times, can't wait. We've got a few hours of uh, highway driving, and well, first we've got to 
few more minutes of corrugations to get through. And then uh, a few hours of highway driving and uh, see what Esperance has got in store for us. I'm gonna say something else, what else was I gonna say? Oh, we made it in. Oh, oh sorry, not pointing at me. Not pointing at me. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. All right, better get this drone back. Basically, it looks like, I think, I've heard, I don't know.